Oh, I'm starting this video out backwards, but basically, if you want to know how I built this originally, link in description. Okay, let's get on with it. What's up, everybody? You'll never guess what's going on. It looks really light in here, like you'd never know what time of day it is, but it's actually pitch black outside and raining. Let me show you. Pitch black and raining. All right. I see my meter is pegging. Hopefully it's not too loud. Let's get back in here. Okay. It's hard to tell what's going on with the audio, but anyway, this video is about my original hot end build. So I've been having problems with it. Uh, it's been giving me some weird things happens with temperature. I thought it was the thermistor, but after looking at this closely, I think, and I hope I'm right, the heating coil is actually shorting out in like one or two of the windings, which causes the heat to fluctuate. So we're gonna rebuild this a different method this time. I got a, I finally got a hold of some um, fiberglass insulation that I can put around the coil. Finally, uh, I got this at Apex Electronics. I think I bought it for 50 cents a foot. No, 10 cents a foot. Yeah, 10 cents a foot. I think. I think so, because I bought 100 feet and it was like 10 bucks. Uh, I also got some uh, coated stuff. This is um, fiberglass that's been coated with um, uh, the, uh, the rubber stuff. I can't think of it. Uh, anyway, um, yeah. The other thing I did is I originally wrapped this with a uh, uh, some fiberglass and that's helped out a lot. I can't think of the name of this. Uh, what's the rubber you use on this stuff? It smells old by the way. Anyway, let's dig into this so I can show you what I'm talking about. Alright, once again I'm really sorry about the audio if it's terrible. I'm not reshooting this. So here's what the wire looks inside of there. It's a bit hard to see. The lighting's not great. But um, this wire, I have this zip tied, so if I cut this zip tie off, you'll see that these wires can can move around quite a lot. Well, apparently it melted to that. Anyway, these wires move around a lot, and one of the wires inside of there is uh, is moving to the point where it's actually touching. Let me get you a better shot. All right, I apologize, I'm holding the camera, but um, yeah, this wire that's going in right there, if I can do this with one hand, see how it's just sort of flopping around in there and touching wires? Um, I actually peeled off the pieces here. If you, didn't, if you don't remember, you didn't ever see that video, I used this stuff. Um, exhaust crack sealant just to hold everything in place it's hard hard as a rock and uh, it actually worked really well but I never had the insulation on the wire because I didn't have it it was uninsulated wire so we're gonna basically just take this apart and put this stuff on the wire tape it up a little and put it back together and I'm actually gonna try wrapping the wire on top of itself to try to get the heat more concentrated towards the tip so, if all goes well, the fiberglass won't break down, and, uh, yeah, it should work. So, let's tear it apart, just to give you a visual what that looks like. Alright, well, here's what it looks like. Um, it's, it is moving around quite a lot, but that's just because I took, uh, all this crap off. But, basically, uh, I'm just gonna rewrap this guy on top of itself. Let's see if I can get a shot of this. If you look, I think the, uh... The stuff actually ate into the glass because it actually cracked the tip of the glass. So I don't have another thermistor with me, otherwise I'd replace this. I think it's still good. I'll check it with the multimeter, but uh, that's crazy. It actually ate all the way into the glass. So we'll unwind this. See what we got. 
Okay, after further investigation, it appears this wire, although still good, has some spots in it that are quite concerning. So everywhere the other wire went down the center and flipped back up. Um, let's see if I can find a good spot. It's really hard to see, but it's actually black right there. And it appears, let's see if I can zoom in, it appears as if it's, I don't know, a different color right there. I guess it's because the tape was on there and it kind of burned off. But there, it looks thinner in certain spots, which is a bit worrisome. Right, uh, it's hard to see, but... just It just appears like it's a little thinner. Maybe it's okay, I just need to clean it off. Ah, uh, but first, I don't think we need any of this. That stuff is really hard like a rock. Okay, well, I ran my finger over this stuff and straightened it up. And to be honest with you, it actually looks pretty good. Uh, it's still got a lot of strength. And it doesn't appear to be anything wrong with it. Those little spots, I guess, is where the Kapton tape I had originally used just melted. Just too hot for it. So let's go ahead and uh, I'll probably have to uncrimp one side. I don't think I'm going to be able to get the... Uh, the sheet over top of these big connectors, so we'll uncrimp one end and slide our insulation on here. I'm kind of surprised, actually, that the Kapton tape on the inside here didn't really burn. You can see where that, that wire was run up the center, where it kind of probably got hotter than the rest, but I'm rather surprised it didn't get, you know, too bad. Oh, the rain! Anyway, so here it is. I took one connector off and I unsoldered uh, one of my pigtails because I had soldered these on there apparently. Little snippets of the old one, I guess. Um, and if you don't remember, I'm just reminding you that I used a barrel connector, a crimp connector, and I took just a piece of the barrel and then I just wrapped the wire like this and I did solder it. It looks like it, it's not soldered right now, but it, it was soldered. Just to sort of hold everything in place. And then, um, and then crimp the connector on there. So if, uh, if you want to know way more detail than you need to, go watch my other video of me actually building this thing. Okay, I have some 3M electrical uh, fiberglass tape. This stuff works really good in these applications. And then I've wrapped one layer on top of the original copper piece here and then I've got uh, just some Kapton tape holding this in place so I'm actually going to spiral this all on the end and then put some tape around it um, I don't even think I'm going to use any of this this time I think it'll be fine so let's just see what we get okay well there you go it's not so bad now if you remember last time I had the wire wrapped all the way up that copper tube that I got there all the way up to the top of the tape um, and that really I think was very unbeneficial I want to try to cool as much as I can up here so keeping the, the heat at the end is much smarter um, seems to work better my hole for my thermistor is right there and I'll pop my thermistor in there and then I'll just tape this all up with fiberglass tape all right, I just cut one of these fiberglass pieces in half, wrapped it nice and tight on there, and then I'll add the thermistor and do another layer. Okay, so Kapton tape, and then uh, first a layer of the fiberglass tape, then some Kapton tape. So that's it. Uh, then I'm gonna wrap the, the actual fiberglass insulation around it, but I wanted to show you what it looked like, how I taped it up. I think it should be fine. Uh, the one thing I've learned about the fiberglass tape, not this stuff, but uh, the actual tape here, is that this stuff, once it's heated, it kind of holds its shape uh, and it really stays in place. And you can practically burn the fiberglass and it just, it doesn't do anything. It gets really brittle though, so you got to keep that in mind. Wow, it's still raining like nuts outside. You know, it only rains like four times a year here in SoCal. So this is a rare moment. You'll just have to deal with the audio. Um, so here it is. 
I am going to test this and let you know how it turns out later. Uh, it'll be in the end of this video, so yeah, cut to that soon. Oh boy, but first, it is raining. Look at that. I like the rain. Kind of wish it thunderstormed more though. Freaking cool. What's up everybody? So it's, oh, I don't know, two weeks later. Uh, the results are in. So I rebuilt this nozzle. I bet this is very shaky. I am sorry. Let me fix that for you. Uh -huh, look at that stabilization. Isn't that nice? Uh, anyway, so I have tested this out and found out that I still have some sort of a thermistor problem. It is still not holding a very good temperature, but it is printing a lot better. So the heating of the uh, the hot end more towards the tip, but of course makes it uh, a lot better. Now, I've not really had this many troubles before and that thermistor having such an issue with it uh, seems a little flaky. So I'm not going to end this video just yet. I'm going to go on to replace that and then make sure that solves my problem. Because the whole idea behind making videos is to show you guys my problems and hopefully they help yours. So, anyway. That's all I got. We'll see you later. By the way, I'm printing more polypropylene glass filled filament. Some pretty cool stuff actually. What's up everybody? Welcome back. So it's been actually quite some time and it's finally time to finish the little idea, problem, situation that I had with the extruder on this machine. So as you guys know, or the hot end I should say, as you guys know I've been fighting the hot end in this video and I've come to find out that um, changing the thermistor didn't really help. So briefly let's just like actually look at this. So I'm gonna do my best to draw on this piece of paper, okay? So normally what I've got, all right, I've got the tube coming down here, I've got this very small copper block that looks like this, and then uh, and then on the end, which this is threaded all the way, well actually this is not threaded all the way, this is actually the nozzle. Okay, so it looks like this. Um, in my machine. So the nozzle is isolated and it's all threaded into this uh, copper. This part right here is all a copper block. So I have wire wrapped around this and I have my thermistor placed right there. So what happens is the wire and the thermistor are too close together. So anytime you start heating the wire starts interacting with the thermistor and you start creating a feedback loop okay within the PID alright and this is where my problem is the PID for this particular printer because it's running a RAMS board and a Delta and a touch not a touch screen but and the um, the uh, input interface it's actually just doesn't have enough time to react so even when you reconfigure the PID value it's still jumps around quite a lot. Now I've had good luck and I've had bad luck. So let's talk about this real quick though. So I have a very very small amount of thermal mass here. So the idea is to heat the thermal mass so that as you push plastic through here you do not change the temperature, right? So if I have um, if I have a light load of plastic you just see uh, a little dip in temperature but if I'm like really pushing plastic through you have a really big dip in temperature okay if this is the temperature this here and this is how much plastic is going in so the problem is is if you have a really big aluminum block or some other block you know that that comes like way out here like you see some of them and the heater cartridges is here and the temperature probe is here you have a lot of thermal mass so it basically changes this dip and doesn't really dip very much however let's say you want to change temperature okay then it also takes a really long time to change the temperature 
Now I would rather have a much higher wattage heater, okay? So I'd have a, a much higher wattage heater and then force a lot of current through this thing and heat this up really fast and come, you know, fix these changes faster. So the PID algorithm would actually be fixing these things. So I really like this design better where you have just the coil and the hot end and not too much thermal mass. You need a little, but not too much. Um, so with that said, um, the idea or the way to fix this, all right, like I said right now, I've got what looks to be about like this. And this is a great representation of my hot end. Okay, now the way to fix this is to put the thermistor down here. Okay, so you still got your coil of winding here, the heater element, but you put your thermistor down here on the bottom. Now, I haven't done that yet, but I'm 90% sure that that will help me out tremendously because all the heat from this wire is actually conducting into the thermistor and really throwing things off. So this allows a little bit more time for the heat to transfer through this copper piece and into the actual nozzle. And it's better to take a measurement more towards the nozzle anyway. So anyway, uh, that's the simple representation of what's going on. The PID just can't keep up. Um, if you do anything with the interface while it's printing, it's really slow to operate and so everything's just running on like the minimal amount of processing power it can because a delta already is doing so much processing power that a Cartesian printer is not. Then you add all the extra PID stuff on top of that. Um, there is an auto-tune function and that actually worked pretty darn good, but it still just just didn't work out perfectly. Now I bet you if I had a better um, feedback loop system with the PID where it was much faster and updating a lot faster, it'd probably work pretty well the way it is right now. It's just it needs to be tuned a lot better. So anyway, I'm going to conclude this video at that and um, probably end up building a brand new hot end of some kind and design it a little better. This one was designed with minimal amount of time and parts that I had laying around. The next one, maybe I'll engineer it a little better. If you ask me why I don't just purchase one, um, it's because I like making stuff. Yeah, it takes time and it's sometimes frustrating, but you learn that way. So in the end, that's what I got. Now, I'm not using an all-metal hot end. I'm using a um, PTFE sleeve inside this one, and it's been working a lot better. I made some adjustments. It was smashing into the hole and causing some problems. But for the OSD, I'm going to need to really configure this thing the way I want. Now with the OSD, I want to be able to change temperature really fast because I do plan on using one nozzle. I'm not going to be doing color mixing, but I do want to be able to use different plastics. And if you use a very small cavity, very precisely made, and you use a very small heating block and you're able to actually control this well and not have a problem that I'm having here, um, then you'll be able to do some interesting things with that. So that's kind of the other reason why I've been playing with this and doing it the way I want to do it. All right, peace out, have a good day, God bless, leave a comment, and uh, yep, I hope this was helpful. I have no idea if it was, but that's all I know. Bye.